And here, let's take a look at who we've got. We've got Yvonne Flock playing against Luis Salvato. And uh, this one's really cool, Cedric, because one of the decks that you will see a lot if you play Historic, but wasn't quite as popular uh, of a deck here is a Rakdos Arcanist build, which is exactly what Luis Salvato's brought to the table, Jun Sacrifice in the hands of Yvonne Flock. So Jun Sacrifice has that some players obviously knew was in this format, but really starting to figure the best way to build it and kind of hone it. Actos are so for sure. What's most interesting about this is we still have, feels like this is the best game one in the format. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, a, that's a statement. That's huge. Yeah, especially given the preponderance of Sultai and some of the other decks. Yeah, that's a real thing. Like, no, you don't think Goblins with Muxes is the best game one deck in the format? No. No, I think that this is, and well, he's six and zero. Oh, so who can argue? So let's see what happens here. We're already getting things rolling. As what you'll see here from Luis Salvado is a string of combinations of cards that are unlikely <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to have come together. Cards like Village Rights. Yeah, that's right. This deck plays four copies of Village Rights. One of the best cards, by the way, to get things rolling is this one right here. Stitcher's Supplier. When it ETBs or dies, you mill yourself for three, so it can put six cards in your graveyard. Having cards in the graveyard is the name of the game for this. And some of the payoffs includes Croxa, which is a card that uh, you can bring back multiple times in the same turn with the deck. And Claim to Fame is your, kind of your big way these back. That's something that we're going to be seeing probably this game as we see things start to move forward. Now, it does have other plans as well, like Young Pyromancer, to kind of just create a whole bunch of tokens and, and get some value going. But the namesake of the deck is really important, and that is the Dreadhorde Arcanist, which lets you abuse all of the cards in your graveyard, like Thoughtseize or Village Rights, or even if you can pump it up some of the other cards to really get some value. This card, or excuse me, this deck can go from zero to hero in a short minute. It doesn't even look like sometimes you have that much going on. And then all of a sudden you have claim to fame and things get out of hand very quickly. Yeah, things can, others, get, they can get completely mm -hmm. out of control with Young Pyromancer. Uh, and, and that's like, you know, the, the thing I think I like most about this Rakdos Arcanist deck, you know, is namesake card in Arcanist, the Dreadhorde one. It's not showing up yet. It's the deck that uses its graveyard the best. It's the deck that the graveyard is an extension of its hand, and that's what makes it so powerful, especially in the first game. Now, when we get to the sideboard, we'll see that Salvato has some ways to not use his graveyard as much. But in this particular game, in game one, he uses his graveyard better than anybody, and ideally we'll see him take advantage of that. And you want to see he's taking advantage of something. Here's Mayhem Devil, a card that we watched LSV take great advantage of last round, and Yvonne Flock's going to try to do the same this round. That's right, and it is incredible. Uh, you know, Mayhem Devil, I mean, look at the board. It's a 2-1. <laughs> there'll be a 1-1, one, one, and there was another 1-1. One, one. Yep. So it's just like exactly where Mayhem Devil wants to be. And you mentioned uh, Luis. One of the key things about the game that we saw with Luis versus Huey was double Mayhem Devil, and that's what Yvonne Flock had, has here as well. He's got another one in his hand. Mayhem Devil is very good in this matchup. You mentioned Pyromancer being a 2-1, the tokens it makes being a 1-1. When the Cat Engine on is online, it's trivial to take care of the tokens and Young Pyromancer, and heck, even three toughness creatures like Dreaded Arcanist at times. So it is good news for Luis Salvato that he does have one of his copies of the Devil in hand, but you mentioned the second Mayhem Devil, and it might be the second the Devil that's necessary for him to turn this game around. Here comes a Woe Strider for Flock. Woe Strider activation. And he even put a card on top, and it looks like, oh my god, another Mayhem Devil? Really, Yvonne? Just never run out? <laughs> yeah, th this just seems impossible. I mean, look at Luis. <laughs> he has two cards, three cards in his hand that trigger Mayhem Devil <laughs> for his opponent. This... This might, this might be a problem. Like, including <laughs> this one. Yep. <laughs> that one's just a land. That's just a little the baby. Croxa, the Croxa does as well. One of the signature plays for the deck is to put Croxa on the battlefield from your hand, but with the sacrifice trigger still up, use village rights to sacrifice it and draw the cards. That's a, a really nice little setup that the, that the deck can do. Well, In the meantime, it's going to be Bedevil... 
a nice flexible removal spell, but it's going to have to take down this Mayhem Devil, which kind of feels weird, but Devil a Devil? Is that... I don't know. We got a flavor judge anywhere? Right. You and I are, do not fit that description. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty far sure somebody from can it. help us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'm if I'm Sobalto in this spot, I don't. You know, we have the benefit of seeing of seeing Ivan Flux hand, uh, and so does everyone at home. Where Sobalto does not. You know, I, he he is a very emotional player. And so far as you know, we watch him in that camera, and we know where he's kind of standing emotionally because he wears it on his sleeve. And it's like, okay, I got to take care of this dumb problem. So let's start there. And if I'm him, I'm like, okay. Problem solved. Let's keep humming along here. And you and I know, problem not solved. Not not even close. No. The only good news for Salvato is that by keeping the the Mayhem Devil on top, Flock isn't playing a land for the turn, so it's just going to be Devil Go. But <laughs> it is also going to be Devil Go next turn as well. And that is very difficult for Salvato to try to overcome. I really don't see many ways out at this point. Uh, to try to beat three Mayhem Devils. Yeah, two two is doable because I'm taking a look at Salvato's deck list. I know there's there's two Spark Harvest and then there's Tuba Devils. So it's going to take more removal, my friend. That's what it's going to take. It is. If he can find it with this Village Rights, he's going to be taking incidental damage from this Mayhem Devil for all of these interactions on his side of the battlefield. It is a rough tax to have to pay, but he's getting two cards out of it and forcing Flock to discard one not bad. He got him down to just the Devil and the Claim the Firstborn. But unfortunately, he found two more lands to add to the three lands he already had in hand. What is going on here for Luis Salvato? This just couldn't be worse. Oh. Six damage is going to come. This is going to fall down to six. It doesn't take much between the trigger is another Devil. Uh, you just saw the eyebrows raised there from Salvato of like, ah, oh, another one. Great. Cool, yeah. and there's the Dreadhorde Arcanist way too late to the party. Uh, I will point out also that if it does become an attrition fight at some point, Lurus of the Dream Den is a card that they're using as a companion here, and that can come down and refill when all the dust has settled, but that isn't going to be relevant this game, it looks like. No, I don't think so. This is kind of a Hail Mary attempt with the Kroxa, but as we can all see, the Claim the Firstborn Hand is going to take that and uh, help to take this game here in just one moment. Yeah, that could have just been an information, you know, a scouting mission there yep. from Luis. <laughs> just show me what else you had. Maybe I could glean something about the way you play or something like that. At any rate, that is going to do it for game number one. Yvonne Flock taking that one down quite easily off the back of not one, not two, but three copies of Mayhem Devil. Now, this is where things get important, though, particularly for Flock. Uh, you know, being Jund, Flock has a lot of access to different ways uh, in the card pool to affect your opponent's graveyard, right? You know, we think of cards like Leyline of the Void or... Uh, or um, uh, scavenging ooze or even you know in, from colorless something like a graph digger's cage but if we look at the deck list here for flock he's actually skimped a bit he just has two scavenging news cedric he doesn't have any other way to interact with the graveyard of course but just ooze yeah so just scavenging news times two and what that means is that flock he doesn't have that many ways to interact. And if you look at what Salvato's trying to do, it is almost entirely graveyard dependent. If you can get their graveyard to be not a factor, the deck is severely inhibited. And that is not gonna be the case here very often. Yeah, scavenging news might be a thing that, uh, that can come down. And if Salvato doesn't have an answer for it, then it could do some decent work for him. But not having access to those sort of catch-alls for the graveyard is going to be a big deal uh, from Salvato's standpoint, and it could let him come back and win this match uh, by winning the next two games. Well, I'll say that. Salvato, uh, I think it's over, so, though he's down a game, so not the end of the world. And you can see it on Salvato's face. He's like, I'll just have a sip of water here. It's not the end of the world. I'm still playing magic. Everything's okay. In the meantime, of course, there's also the other part of his personality that's going, you must win. 
cannot lose this. I can't have this happen. The good news is for both of these players, they're coming to the round at a cool 6-0. and These are our two undefeated players. And, uh, you know, one of them is going to end up at 7-0, of course. But even the one who doesn't has, still has a really great start to the day uh, coming, coming in at 6-1. and one. So tough uh, hill to climb here for Salvato. But let's see if the opening hand can do it. And the answer is, yeah, that, that's a good opener. I think the opener looks totally fine. A couple of copies of Thoughtseize, Dreadhead Arcanist, which, of course, can recast Thoughtseize. So, you know, it seems like a pretty straightforward keep. I think a hand that Salvato's happy enough with. So we, we see how it goes, um, and hopefully it goes well. do want to chime in here really quickly, too. Uh, probably people at home can notice I'm having some minor internet difficulties. We're just going to try to push through it a little bit here. This is, uh, this is life during the quarantine, folks. It's a little frustrating mm -hmm. at times. It is indeed, but you're doing good, Said. Don't worry about it. We'll just keep uh, hitting that refresh button and getting you back in here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, a braid is going to be taken away here. It looks like to protect the Arcanist, it's going to come down with no nothing on the other side that can actually mess with it. And now we get to see what Flock can do. And it's just going to be a Priest of the Forgotten Gods, which isn't going to do much. And now Salvato gets to perk up a little and go, all right, all right, all right. Now I get to start recasting that Thought Seize, as you mentioned. And right now he can just strip his hand away. There's yeah, you a get thought to, seize out of the yard. Go yeah, ahead. You can recast the thought seize, take a midnight reaper. You have a thought seize in your hand, or you can play another copy of Dreadheart Arcanist. But I think more importantly, you probably feel you probably feel pretty safe about hey, priest is probably not going to activate the next turn. If my opponent peels a woe strider, I guess it will. Um, but for the most part, I don't think priest is going to activate. Pretty simple block one three into a one into a one two. But you know, if if I'm Luis Salvato, I'm like, all right, you know what? I've shredded my opponent's hand. They better draw a good card. Otherwise, this game might be pretty easy for me. That's right. And, you know, I'm also curious to see at what point Salvato decides to fire off that village rights. You know, um, the Dreadhorde Arcanist, he's got another copy in his hand. He has completed the task of, of taking apart the hand here of Flock, leaving him with two lands and a, a land off the top means nothing else is coming. But now the Arcanist kind of isn't doing that much. It can buy back the Thought Seas, but he, knew, he knows two of the three cards. You know, I, I wonder... If if we see Salvato say, "Hey, I, I need to I need to get something going beyond what I have right now," or if he just leans on this Arcanist going forward, this one's going to be tough. It's just going to take two damage off of the Thought Season. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a whammy. <laughs> Maybe pays for Luris at this point. Like he's just not doing that much. I mean, he's got it, so Flock isn't either. But I'm kind of curious to see what happens now. Yeah, this is kind of tough and actually kind of interesting too because I think you can make an argument of play Arcanist and then just Village Rights one away on the end step. And, you know, I, I need to find... I'm advantaged right now in so far as I know you have nothing. But I'm not really doing... A, oh, boy. Well, it's going to change now. There's the there's the brick wall. Yep, it's going to change now because, you know, this was the card that I was scared of the previous turn. As if yep. Wolf Strider's drawn, now Priest is active. Uh, and also you've got... You, you, you're not far from an escape either. Uh, with Woe Strider. So that's the card that changed the dynamic on the game in a very meaningful way. That was huge. I yeah. mean, it also is a favorable interaction against village rights where, yep. you know, the real blowout is when they point a removal spell and then you get to village rights your your creature away. That isn't how this works right, though, because it's a sacrifice. In... So, yeah. I'm gonna change wow. to the shiny new channel if they do use me, but I'll stay yeah, here for I would now be for direction. Okay. You're out there for that Woe Strider. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is tough on both sides. It's kind of like, do you activate priest? I don't know. Do you cast village rights on the end step? My answer was I don't know, but the but clearly Sato said no. So we play on. I get. I mean, I guess you do have a bedevil that can kill the priest, and then you can move forward accordingly. So it's not like hopeless or anything, but that's um that's what it looks like right now. Yeah, that Woe Strider was just huge. That has unlocked not only the activation of the Priest, but also this kind of putting the ball back in Salvato's court just because it's a 3-2. It's perfectly sized against the Arcanist. So yep. Salvato can't just go, I'm in there and you know try to get something going that way. And look, he's actually looking like he's going to pay the companion cost on Luris to put Luris in hand here. I, that was the whole turn. Yeah, this is, this is brutal. Because you mentioned this a turn ago, you're like, is it, are you supposed to do that? Oh, no! Okay, actually, hold on. 
No, that's. I mean, claim is actually still pretty good, right? It because, is good because like you claimed you you claimed Dreaded Arcanist, they sacrifice it, but then you have priest to kill the other Dreaded Arcanist. So, boy, that kills both Arcanists. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think that Flock has anything to to you know, flashback it as it were with the Arcanist, you know, for full maximum value, but still getting both of those off the battlefield here is pretty good. Now, the interesting thing though, is if you're Yvonne Flock and you, cause you know about the Luris in hand is that if, for example, Salvato were to go land Luris, uh, Arcanist, you, you would be kind of bumped. Yes. As it stands though, the village rights is gonna come in handy. Describing the scenario that, or uh, kind of showing us the scenario that we had described earlier, where a targeted spell is trying to hit your creature and you get to use village rights to sacrifice it. Beatdowns, straightforward beatdowns. Now again, this is your attack, makes total sense, three, two into a one, three, gets your three points of damage in. I mean, I mean technically you could block, I'd be surprised. Well, consider me surprised. I'm a little surprised too. I, this looked like three free damage for Flock because if Salvato doesn't block, then Flock can just sacrifice his two creatures and kill the creature anyway. But now he doesn't have to. Yeah, consider me slightly surprised. I mean, I can understand it. Like you're going to lose it anyway, so you might as well block with it. But then, of course, if you if you don't block with it, three damage comes through, and then you can sacrifice the two creatures to the priest. That's two more damage. Draw a card. Blah blah blah. So yeah, I can both sides of the point. I can too. I guess it just uh, matters that you've left this Woe Strider on the battlefield and how much do you care about that? And, you know, obviously the answer for Salvato is not that much, you know, because yeah. I'm going to lose either way. But he says, I'd rather have my creature in the yard than take the three damage and, and have you have your creature in the yard too. But look at this, it's going to happen anyway. So Salvato, very heads up play there, given the way that things panned out as Flock really is running out of gas here and needs stuff to happen. He's going to get this Woe Strider back right now. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I like this in, in so far as, okay, so, you know, get a new card, bigger creature, 5-4. Kind of in the same battlefield attack. I'm not going to call it free because you had to, obviously, run some cards in the graveyard, but it, it feels pretty free. Yeah, and, and that was the that was the mix, missing factor there for us, was that he could get uh, escape the Woe Strider regardless, and that's why we saw the block from Salvato. Yep. But this is the turn that I described as well that's kind of like, okay, He's back in business. It's Luris play the Arcanist, and you know Flock does need to find some way to interact with the, with the Luris here, or it could take over the game. So now, now, if I'm a Vaughn, I'm taking a look at the battlefield and I'm saying, all right, so I got an active priest. So if I sacrifice my two creatures, you're going to sacrifice your Arcanist. I don't get anywhere. Uh, I drew a Witch's Oven. Doesn't have a huge effect on the battlefield. So I feel like Marshall step one might be just attack with Woe Strider. It's a five four into a three two and a one three. So double block and kill it. Um, but a double block isn't all that appealing because I think you've got a lot of interest in keeping your Luris. However, if you just say I'll block with the Arcanist, then Priest will take care, Priest will take care of the Luris. So I think you just have to let it through. Yeah, I'm with you, Cedric. You just have to take it. But boy, that's a big hit to take at this point. From nine life down to four, and Flock has done a good job of just sort of chipping away with an active Priest of the Forgotten God sitting there too. This is very tenuous position here for Salvato. Like he needs to connect with this Luris next turn at least, and that's very difficult against the Sacrifice deck. Okay, so we're gonna let it rip now. Sure, Ooh. down to two. Okay. I wonder if he has... Oof, that's a whammy of a draw. All right. So this Bedevil basically has to kill the Priest this turn, or the Luris has to hit, but either of those can happen at this point. So that's good. So and that this was is an engine that can really go for Salvato, you know, village rights, Dreadhorde Arcanist, just cast it again next turn. Like you can do a lot with this. Yeah, so that was an interesting play there from Yvonne because it was kind of like, hey, this game's slipping away from me. So I kind of need to draw a new card and find something because I don't really have very much going on. And we can see there's just a land in hand, a Wolf Strider in the graveyard that can't be escaped. So. This is getting away from Avon and Salvato is, I mean, I don't want to say winning because he's at five, but five isn't like two. Like, this is not good. Oh, well, it might change. Hello, there's a Mayhem Devil, and that was an upkeep a devil to actually kill the Witch's Oven, which was kind of interesting because he could wait, right? I think he could wait. Like, the Witch's Oven wait. isn't going anywhere. 
Yeah, like, no, he just <laughs> just he just hovered over the double like wait a minute. This wait a creatures? minute. <laughs> this maybe could have been better served. Oh no. Yeah, this mayhem devil is extraordinarily threatening, but there is good news for Salvato. Currently, no way to sacrifice anything for Flock, as the priest needs another creature, but boy, he's in a very precarious position. Here comes Village Rites, which actually sacrifices something, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that'll be down to four, goes Salvato. Maybe we were supposed to respond to the devil. Oh, oh. What in the world? Well, Young Pyromancer is a fine magic card, but with the Mayhem Devil out there, it definitely doesn't do as well. Here comes this Lurus, which has really kept Salvato alive, by the way. Yep. The lifelink on that has been important. Salvato, I think if you were to get into his inner monologue right now, might be a little bit frustrated with his own plays here this game and so far as how he used the Bedevil, uh, but also the sacrifice there with the Mayhem Devil taking one uh, when I think he generally would respond to that in, in normal mm. circumstances. So uh, maybe some minor missteps. Again, I don't know if those are going to be game altering, but again, when you're able to see the player, and especially when it comes to Salvato, you can tell he's a little bit frustrated with himself with that decision making. Here's a second copy of Young Pyromancer. Are there any one drops in the graveyard? Absolutely. There is a village rights in there, and it's time to get busy. This is going to put a lot of creatures out on the battlefield. Interestingly, Flock traded off the Mayhem Devil as well. And here's an Abraid. Wow, Luis Salvato. He has actually gotten back to a good board state. And he's going to put a ton of pressure on Yvonne to do something this next turn. That was kind of crazy. Never give up. Never surrender. Another priest off the top is not what Flock wanted to see. And there's Castle Lockflane. Hey, well, how much would you pay for a card, Marshall? I might do the first one. I might do the first one. <laughs> so he plays the castle and it's four. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't do anything. Let's see what he draws here. So this is obviously not going to be a castle turn because he's got village rights in the graveyard and there's claim to fame as well. I don't mind that. Somehow has found even more lands. My goodness sake, Salvato was flooded out, and it's kind of looking like he's going to win. Flooding out, but still extremely, extremely competitive in this game. Uh, I'm trying to think, if, I, if I'm Yvonne Flock, like, what is my best draw in this situation? I'm not sure I know what it is. Right. Let me take a look, Ski. Does he have Corvold or something? Um. Well, there's company if it's still in. Four of company, those. there you go. There companies, you go. companies generally a pretty good draw. But again, he may have sideboarded down from some of those. Unclear has a corvold in the main, or excuse me, in the sideboard. I mean, th there's obviously better draws than what he's been drawing. I don't know what exactly they want to draw in this spot, but I'm leaning towards collective company. Uh oh, Salvato's doing math. This is not good news for Ivan Flock fans out there. We're seeing claim. And it looks like it may be targeting a Dreadhorde arc. And it's the only other option is a young Pyromancer. Okay. So it's back. Hey. And that's going to be it. Hey. Hello. Collected company off the top of the library. That's exactly what Cedric wanted to see. Now let's see if Yvonne Flock can capitalize on this. He already has the Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Luis is praying. He's looking up to the sky and praying that he doesn't just lose here. How about two? How about two mayhem devils? <laughs> that, that would be, do it. That would be. I. I don't know if that's a game winner. It's close. I mean, they're not bad. I'll say that much. Flock, taking his time choosing. <laughs> two scavenging mm. ooze. All right. Okay, or I should say both scavenging ooze. So now my question is: so we got plenty of green mana available. Is it yeah, too late? Is it too late? Man, last turn scavenging news would have been insane. Yep. And this turn, it feels like the graveyard's kind of tapped. Red cap melee. All right, well, the claim to fame is in there, so get the fame out of here. That's a good place to start. The fame, of course, can be targeted on the Dreadhorde Arcanist, which can unlock cards like Bedevil or other cards that be cast out of the graveyard.
There's that castle. Hmm. Okay, you're gonna have to just pass the turn back yep. and let the, the scavenging oozes do their thing. Okay. There goes Luris. And by the way, that's Yvonne's like totally going up as well. Yep, which I think matters in this spot. Mm hmm. Maybe more than we may initially realize. Right, especially if the plan is to try to go very wide with Young Pyromancer. Every one of these life points really does add up. I really like the play here from Yvonne. I think what I'm seeing here is one scavenging is now a 3-3 three, three, and he's trying to make the other scavenging is a 3-3 three, three, as opposed to moving all in on one and making it big, spreading out your tokens. Yeah, it allows that's what you to, he's doing. It allows you to play around a removal, a removal spell like this, which I think is really smart. Okay, Red Cap Melee is going to take out that original... 3-3 three, three scavenging ooze, but the other one will still grow here as it's going to eat up a young pyromancer. Witch's Oven and also the Woe Strider's active now too for Flock. And what I mean by active is it can be escaped. Yep. And that oven might not be bad either. Remember that that Bedevil took care of the oven initially. And that means that, uh, in my estimation, that Luis Alvato felt that that card was going to play a pivotal role in things with how quickly mm -hmm. he killed it and then maybe regretted it uh, maybe a turn later. Uh, we're pretty far past that point now, but I'm curious about how afraid he is that an oven is now resolved and is on the battlefield. And now here comes Wostrider. Uh, you mentioned the fact that it could be escaped. Right, so it looks like that's what's going to happen here for Flock, perhaps giving some food to the Priest of the Forgotten Gods, though right now the, the GOAT token, yeah, sure. But the other two cards are pretty valuable on the battlefield and perhaps... Uh, not worth it to try to grind down with Priest. You know, the card, of course, being kind of the most important <laughs> thing. Oh, and look at this. Stitcher's Supplier here from Salvato. Well, Salvato was like, he did like a praying hands emoji. Like, yes, this is what I wanted to draw. Okay. Like, okay. So we thought Oh, and look at this. He hit fame. Okay. Claim to fame, but the fame part of it. Yeah, but, you know, but Ooze can take care of anything that that would even target. So I was a little surprised to see him be happy about drawing Supplier. Like, what? Well, Ooze is on the battlefield. Now, obviously, when you say when you play Supplier, Trigger, uh, Resolves, and then you you, re you retain priority. So, you know, you can one-up a Scavenger use in that regard. So I don't, maybe he was trying to find a Croaks there, uh, but he didn't find one. No, but he can cast Fame here before passing priority and at least get a little bit out of that. I don't know where he goes from here, though. Perhaps if there's still a Bedevil, let's see, how many green mana for Flock? two so yeah he won't be able to flash something back with dreadhorde arcanist and fame is kind of whatever if you're not using it for that ability yeah um i'm curious i'm curious what he was trying to find because he was he was clearly happy about it now again i'm gonna ask you a question i was jokingly saying earlier but mm -hmm. how much did you pay to draw a card <laughs> yeah we're, yeah we're now it's, there. It, it really is starting to become a thing isn't it He's going to target the young Pyromancer, which would open up an attack here if he'd like. And he is. All right. He says, I'm good with any of these trades. I'll trade for your Strider, your Ooze, or your Priest. Can I chump block with my Goat token? Could take it. That's an option. Okay. No, oh, the goat's going to jump in front. Okay. And probably just turn into a food here. Well, tough food or scry. I like scry, bud. Oh, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. Flock top decking here needs as much action Ooh. as he can find. Uh oh. That one went on top and it's a Midnight Rider. Yeah, I like that. Midnight Reaper is looking. Uh, Reaper, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I mean, Midnight Reaper. So, in a perfect world. You got some bozos to sacrifice. All these cards of the of the creatures that are on the battlefield right now, Priest of Forgotten Gods is far and away the worst in my opinion. So okay. I think that's one to sacrifice if you're going to pick any of these. Because like I, I want to keep my ooze, can't sacrifice my Wolfstrider to itself, can sacrifice it to Witch's Oven, obviously. But I'm curious how how we're going to manage this Midnight Reaper because uh, I mean it, it's it's very impactful, impactful enough to keep it on top of the scry. Yeah, I mean, this is a way for Yvonne Flock to just reload, get a bunch of cards into hand, and try to take over this game. T 
10 power on the board here for Flock, or excuse me, for uh, Salvato. And he finds Claim the Firstborn. Can he do some nonsense with this? Well, remember, anything that is targeted by Claim, if on Flock is going to get sacked. Either, okay. either to Oven or to Strider. Now, so this is just a removal spell in this scenario. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like this could just this, this could be your way to say, you know what, I finally killed your scavenging goose. Okay. Well, sort of. And I'm saying sort of because Salvato doesn't have a sacrifice engine on the battlefield. Hmm. So so Flock could actually just say sure. Yeah. Just bring it back tonight. So yeah, so this could be one of those times where it's like, hey, I'm gonna take your scavenging goose, and you're hoping that that yeah, so you might be hoping where he's like, I'm gonna sacrifice this in response. But he might be cagey enough to say, okay, that's fine. You got it. Wow, this is a cool moment. Let's see if Flock says, I can't risk it. I just have to sack. There's two unknown cards in hand for Salvato. But also, Salvato's just been passing the turn, uh -huh. right? Like, those cards have been in hand for a long time. And look at Flock going to the tank thinking about this. Because, boy, it's a big difference if you just say, sure, and you get the card back. <laughs> And, well, he's going to start by activating. Yep, which I like. So you can eat some stuff that's going on in the graveyard. Like, you know, uh, if there's like a village rights down there, then the Dreadheart Arcanist would attack, maybe throw itself away, recast the village rights, whatever, uh, and sacrifice the scavenging ooze, so on and so forth. So I, I like I like the idea of I'm going to remove some spells with my ooze, with my green mana. And I, I, I generally think this might just be, okay, you have my scavenging ooze. I would not put it past Flock, but it is a tough call to make in game for sure. Because you got to also remember, and I think the point that you brought is really salient, which is, well, you've just been holding cards, and anything that you would have drawn, you almost certainly would have played. If you had a removal spell, you, you probably would have killed scavenging use. Any other creatures, you probably would have just cast. Right. Oh, All right, well, it's going to be the who's going. And, Ooh. you know, this, this, the, the harm in this is lessened significantly by the fact that you just get a card off it anyway yeah. from the Reaper, right? So it makes it really tough to make that call. Yeah, cool, little... cool little moment though, for sure. Oh, spray. Hey, that's gonna take care of that rider. Uh, that's gonna that, that's that's gonna do better than that, bud. That's gonna take care of rider, and then it and then Arcanist can recast it to take care of priest. And I think we might be serving it up. Wow. With a lot of these that creatures. Could just be GG here. That 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 was a really really good turn. Wow, Magma Spray against Ivan Flock is nice. That has the ability to kill some of his most important oh my creatures God, this is, and exile. Them. This is sick. Okay, so you target the reap you target the Reaper with the spray, and then uh -huh. in your graveyard, you get to get back spray and claim. With oh man. So you so get to steal one, kill the other. So you yeah, get to that you get to, like game. I think you get to spray the priest and then claim the strider, and the witch's oven is tapped. Yep. All now, of those things are true. This that, looks like yeah. GG. Yeah, and obviously the you're gonna claim the strider and it can't attack because we're already in combat, but like this turn was sick. It can't block. Yeah. Wow, what a turn for Luis Salvato. Really putting on the fireworks here after having drawn a lot of lands, and you can see how happy he is about it. He once again kind of looked to the sky because this this draw did not look great from him he hit a lot of lands in the middle part of the game but if this list is left unchecked it is extremely powerful the knock on this deck isn't that it's not good enough or that it's not on the same power level as the other decks the knock is that it's a little bit of a glass cannon in that if you do interact with the graveyard its backup plan is not amazing it it, it really does have a hard time with that kind of thing and now uh, this is, I mean, this is obviously super cutesy bootsy, but you also, cause you have their will strider. You're like, okay, I'll sacrifice a token. Make sure my draw step is good next turn too. Like, Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah. That's, that was a nice turn there for Luis Salvato. Who... <laughs> Luis, you're so expressive and emotive and you look so bored right now. You needed that <laughs> turn, man. He really needed that one. Claim the firstborn off the top of the library here. There is a food token and a witch's oven in the hand here for flock. I wonder if he can come up with a way to survive or do something with this. It seems unlikely from this point. Well, this this to me, it looks so. Weird. Claim the Arcanist. What can you get back? 
you can go claiming mm-hmm. again, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you can that's do. Not, that's not terrible. This is a this is a game here where uh, and it's it's noticeable. Uh, Mayhem Devil Engine was not online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's what that is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, remember, that was a trade. That was the Mayhem Devil trading for Luris. That mm-hmm. was a big play way, way back in this game. So now we're going to see Claim the Firstborn take the Dreadhorde Arcanist and then attack with it and then cast it again from the graveyard. There's multiple sacrifice outlets on the battlefield here for Flock, so whatever he takes is not going to be coming back to the other side. Wonder if you take the Stitcher Supplier. See if there's anything good to do with your graveyard. Looks like we're gonna take Young Pyromancer. Yeah. You gotta block. You gotta block. Uh, you gotta block Ghost Rider because it's lethal. Okay. So and there's Witch's Oven. And so there's you, Witches of it. Yeah, and then, so then you sacrifice the Pyromancer too. And then yeah. you have one, two, three, four. So you, you have six mana. You can gain nine life. And I don't think you're facing lethal. So up to ten. It's only seven. Yeah, it's only yeah. seven. Oh, there's village rights though. Yeah, we left that on top. Get that, yeah, get that supplier in the yard. And let's see what we can find here. Yep. Ooh. Okay, that's some business right there. A fame into the yard, another Stitcher's supplier. Let's see what else is here. Now, where's Croxa? Seriously, this is sideboarded game. Maybe they come out or something. We haven't seen anything. Yeah, that would make it so easy. Fame, I think it's a five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's an attack for nine. And then you get to trigger your Arcanist again. Yep, all of that's true. And this also forces Flock to use all of his mana to sacrifice all three foods. Okay. And it's claimed the firstborn hiding in the graveyard there, and that makes it plenty enough for lethal even through the food situation. Is it lethal? Oh, no, no, no. This was after attacks. My yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So it should be down to one. I think it goes down to one. Yeah, I think it goes down. So I think Three, it goes down eight, to nine. one. One, yeah. And then. And then sacrifices the woe strider. No, no way to do that. Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, so, I'm, okay, so down to one. Okay. You can, you can sacrifice your stuff to control your draw like you did last turn. Okay. My question is, is what are we doing about Wolf Strider on the kickback? Oh, hi, Krosa. Uh, Does he have enough? Yeah. No, yeah, uh... Okay, okay. So, oh, Sabato, he's up in partying. But he's we, out of here. But that we was a, game two. But we got a third game. <laughs> what are you doing? He's gone. What are you doing, Sabato? <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you he just ran into the bathroom to look at the mirror, and he's, like, pumping himself up. You know, he's probably just like, you got this, you're strong enough, you're good enough, you're going to do it. And then he just comes back out and he's ready to go. He's out of here! So what I was going to say was... Um, <laughs> you got time to say it now, Sid. I sure, sure do. <laughs> was, how are we going to deal with the Wolf Rider and the kickback attack? That was my concern. Is I, don't, I never I don't... figured that out. I, unless the Kroxa was castable there, then then that would be lethal. Yeah, so that the, could be why we saw it end. Yeah, right? so the Kroxa the Kroxa could be escaped. Flock had a land of discard, so he was gonna take three, he was at one, he was gonna die. Um but mm-hmm. what, the, I was, what I was gonna the question I was gonna ask was like, if we didn't find a Kroxa, are we just like dead to this Woe Strider untapped because there's no sacrifice outlet? And it's like, all right, take five, you're dead. Um we'll never know because we found one and now Salvato's back. So game three, I'm excited. Right. So maybe Salvato was just like, I can scry a few times with your Woe Strider, and then I can activate my castle. I mean, he'd have to find something that was lethal. Yes. Right? Yes. Or a sacrifice outlet or something. Yep. But he did have the, the castle going there and only one card in hand otherwise, I think. Okay. So at five life, you could get away with it. Uh, I mean, but- that's... <laughs> it was not a foregone conclusion until that Kroxa went into the into the graveyard. Yeah, until he finally found one. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm with you. That was like, there was still magic there until that Kroxa hit. So, 
There you go. Uh, all that aside, that was a really, really good game too. <laughs> Super awesome game. Yeah. And we're going to get a game three here. This is going to decide who's undefeated on day one here at the Mythic Invitational. I'm Marshall Seckliff with Cedric Phillips. Thanks so much for joining us. We're watching Historic here on Arena. This is uh, Historic's first big foray into uh, high-level tournament magic. And, of course, we have thrown it to the hands of the professional players, so they're going to get a bunch of stuff banned or something. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> And, uh, or I shouldn't say that, not, not for historic, uh, suspended or banned. There you uh, go. There you, you go. know, there is something cool with historic. If for those of you that haven't kept up on it, there's kind of an intermediate state for cards where, uh, if the folks down at wizards of the coast, look at the card and say, we're concerned about it. It could be a problem for the format. What they'll do is they'll put it on a suspension list and that'll kind of let them see what happens with the card no longer in the format. And then before the next big event they'll say okay uh it's better the format's better with that we're going to go ahead and move it to the ban list or they'll say you know what it's okay and they'll let it go back in and that's a little bit of a different feature that historic has that other formats don't well it's a feature, how are we looking here it's a feature that i like of the format how we're looking is we're looking okay so thoughts he's took a witch's oven again um Luis Salvato has put a priority on managing Witch's Ovens. He could have taken a Mayhem Devil or a Woe Strider. Now you can make the argument, of course, taking Woe Strider makes no sense because it has escape, but there are certain arguments to take in, and we know how powerful Mayhem Devil is. He, did, he decided not to select any of those creatures, and now, you know, he's made his bed, and now we shall lie in it. Uh, do we have the ability to take care of Mayhem Devil and Woe Strider because we knew they were coming? Yes, those must be dealt with. The Woe Strider is one thing, but as you mentioned in game one, and we saw in what was a, quite a quick game one at the end of the day, was Mayhem Devil was fantastic against Salvato and extremely awkward for Salvato given that Flock is playing it and so many of Salvato's cards trigger it. It's really tough to just spot them a bunch of your key interactions that just get more and more Mayhem Devil triggers than they're even getting on their own. There is so much that I love about the Claim the Firstborn minigame. So you saw Claim go on the stack there, targeting Woe Strider. And Yvonne Flock made, made this face, and he's like, really? Like, you don't even have a Sacrifice Engine on the battlefield? This is, like, annoying, whatever. Um, fine, I'll sacrifice my Woe Strider. And for Luis Salvato, it's like, dope. Now I get to play a land and Kroxa you again. So I'm into that. You know, like, it's just... Because if, if he just says, okay, fine, you have my Woe Strider, then the Kroxa doesn't happen that turn. Um, and so it's like, there's just... There's, like, this little bit of posturing back and forth on, like, so you're actually going to take my creature and sacrifice it or not? That is, I love those little mini games that pop up, especially since Salvato wasn't really in a position to capitalize on that claim. He does have a spark harvest down there, but, you know, <laughs> kill your goat or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. I, not great. Troubles here. Uh-oh. Meow. So yeah. the oven's already on the battlefield. Yeah. The devil's already on the battlefield. All we need is a rip recursible recurable way to sacrifice <laughs> something to sacrifice and there's a cauldron familiar that will come down shortly it's a good time for an abrade it's a really yes. good draw so again do you do you kill the oven or do you kill the devil well I, the devil's doing a bunch of damage to you and you're at 13 with no blockers so yep. that answer is that i think you got to start there now how uh you know, Flock's out a little bit of decision here. Does he want to make a... And again, this is what's kind of compelling, because, like, this sets off the chain of, well, do I want to sacrifice this Devil to Woe Strider, or do I want to sacrifice it to uh, the Oven? Also, do I want to start by sacrificing a Goat, paying you, start scrying, get some value out of the Devil before the Devil dies? So, uh, there's there's some decisions to be made. It's not as simple as a Braid kills a 3-3. Three, three. Right. Absolutely. So, a Braid... A key card here for Salvato as he really needed to stem the bleeding on the interactions that are about to start hitting him as this draw from Yvonne Flock has been pretty darn solid. He's had his key cards, including the sort of trio that you really want to see for this deck with the, the Cat, the Oven, and the Devil. And this is his way to break it apart for Salvato. He's going to pay the three mana to put Luris and Hannon on the battlefield as well. And look at this. He's praying. He says, please let my Luris survive. <laughs> yep. Let me untap with this, please. And at least from what we can see right now, it will, right? That's what it looks like. Huh. Any tradesies? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Salvato respectfully declines. What do you mean, the no? Offer. And there's that cauldron familiar.
That's going to knock Salvato down to six, but critically, he does get to untap with Luris, which could, which could easily let him refill his battlefield over the course of the next turn or two. Well, now it's time to now it's time to get rolling. Now it's time to get rolling. Okay, here's Stitcher Supplier for Salvato. This is going to give him maximum looks at what he might be able to get back with the Luris. And there it is, Dreadhorde Arcanist. You like that. Yeah, you do. Also, the extra cards made enough for Cruxa to escape, although that Woe Strider is in the graveyard right now, right? So there's actually no cards in hand here for Flock? Yes. Okay, so it would just be for damage, but sometimes they do that too. Here's Spark Harvest now to kill the Woe Strider. I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this culture familiar and the switch is up in, and I'm thinking, it's on you guys. You might have to take us home. Boy, these two really go into battle here to see who's going to be undefeated over night after day one. This is the last round of action. And boy, has this been a heck of a match between these two players. Finally, the Spark Harvest is going to resolve, or it actually won't resolve probably. Oh, no, I lied. It did resolve. So the Witch's Oven is still active here. There's still a cat in the yard. And everybody's looking right now at the top of Yvonne Flock's library. There was a scry, and yes, another Mayhem Devil sitting on top. He has had so many Mayhem Devils this game. Well, we know we know Marshall how good it is in the matchup, right? Absolutely. It's just it's just, it's just the best thing going on, uh, and so it's an it's it's an easy scry to the top. That's for sure. That's right, and it looks like he may be able to take this thing down as well. There's a Cruxa coming into play. But the devil on top of the library there for Yvonne Flock could easily lock this thing up for him. Yep. Salvato has an attack here, but it won't work out well as there's still a Cauldron Familiar hanging around. And if you're trying to leverage lifelink against Yvonne Flock's list, it doesn't work very well. And I will say this, Flock does have a lot of life to work with in this spot. So Croxa does run you down pretty quickly. Um, that's part of the appeal. But, True. you know, you, you get to brick off lifelink in a meaningful way here with the cat. So I don't, yeah, you can't even really attack. So, yeah. Lurus yeah. is just going to stay home. Yeah, here comes Familiar. So that'll be on the battlefield with the Witch's Oven or in the graveyard as Von Flock chooses. And that's what he chooses. But bang, there's yeah. the devil. This should do it, right? You sacrifice, this should be it. You sacrifice the token. Uh, you sacrifice the food token. That's one. Cat comes in. That's one. Sacrifice the cat. That's one. Yep, that's it. That's and it. That's Mayhem Devil. Do it. Wow. Mayhem Devil dominating here in our last uh, round of the day. And it's Yvonne Flock who ends up taking this thing. Oh.